surprise to anybody, but uh, uh, what we're trying to do with Student Manager is organize, store, and help you retrieve data. And again, um, codes are part of that. Uh, and, and so again, we're going to kind of try to back, back away and look at the big picture of what it provides for you. Um, and again, the, the kind of things, if you code right and you keep track of the data, uh, what courses, where are people, who are people, what are their interests, uh, you know, what do our people look like? Well, if, if you don't ask them the question or record it, it's kind of hard to get that kind of data out of a system. There is the garbage in, garbage out, which everybody's heard, the ego. But there's also, if you don't have any information, you're looking at a, a black hole. And again, uh, so, so capturing data, recording it is, is the big deal. Um, the, the, mantra, the mantra that I think we really try to emphasize is you code as much as you need. However, uh, if you don't have a reason for a code, don't code it. And again, it's, uh, codes are there for a purpose. And um, you know, asking for some particular piece of data because the director 10 years ago asked for it, uh, unless there's a reason that somebody needs it, it helps you manage your program, it helps you market your program, it help, unless a code helps you better serve your students or serve your master. And by that I mean your institution, the federal government, something that's asking you for data. Uh, to give you money or let you keep in business. Uh, again, that's, that's why you have codes. All right, technically, any field in Student Manager, any data field, the name, the course, the register, the pay, is a code. Uh, <clears throat> we typically think of codes as fields in the screens that are validated. You know, you have the drop downs that you're entering in in particular data. Uh, generally, there is an unlimited number of code definitions. Uh, generally, you have an unlimited number of code definitions uh, as set up by you within the code setup area, which we're going to get to. Certain code areas, for instance, interest codes on the name record and faculty, grouping codes on the course, you can have an unlimited number of codes for any one person or any one course. And Chuck, then yeah. finally, Chuck, codes Chuck. are universal. Everybody who is logging into ACEWARE, student manager, will see and use the same codes. Uh, and again, most codes can be activated. The only caveat to the universal codes, and we're going to talk about this, is scoped interest codes. And uh, I'm excited about, I think, what that can provide, and we'll give you a little review of it. When we talk about codes, one of the things we want to emphasize is that in the preferences area, and again, something that we're going to cover next uh, webinar, uh, it, you've got to pay attention to that. Because if you've turned off a field, nobody can see it, nobody can use it. So uh, we'll cover that. And again, the reminder about preferences, black and blue, uh, user level, and then the global only done by the admin. Now, a couple of things that we always want to emphasize. If you're going to do coding, if you're not going to do anything else, I am a believer, add a subject code to a course. Uh, and that will allow you to be able to then have, anytime you have a subject code on the course, any student who registers for that class will automatically get an interest code on their name record. And that allows you to cross-pollinate the names and be able to build target lists of people who uh, would be prospects for classes in that particular subject area. So again, that's a huge one. So again, feed the course, the course feeds the name, and that will feed all your marketing down the road and statistical reporting, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So, so that is the big deal why we really, really encourage you to put a subject code on a course.